Hello, and welcome to The Forgotten Feminine, where we discuss female characters from art, mythology, and history. Today, we are talking about Hans Christian Andersen's classic story, The Snow Queen. Disney may claim The Snow Queen as inspiration for the movie Frozen, but the two stories share very little in common. The opening text for Andersen's tale is one of my most favorite pieces of literature, and I will take this story over Elsa any day of the week. To begin, I'm going to tell you a very brief, very incomplete summary of the story, in case you aren't familiar with it. From there, we can go into a deeper analysis and examine how it relates to the feminine. In the beginning, a very clever goblin creates a special mirror where everything good and lovely is distorted to become ugly. The mirror makes the loveliest landscapes look like boiled spinach. To mock the angels, they attempt to carry the mirror into heaven, but it slips from their grasp and falls back to earth, shattering into billions of pieces, some no larger than a grain of sand. Every piece of the mirror retained its power, and the pieces scattered across the world into the eyes and hearts of man, even made into glasses at times. People's perceptions begin to be twisted. Two children, Gerda and Kay, are playing in a garden box when something scratches Kay's eye, and then his heart. Once carefree and loving, Kay begins to turn cold and critical. He abandons Gerda, who loves him. Attaching his sled to a passing sleigh, Kay is carried away and presumed dead when he does not return. The sleigh belongs to the Snow Queen herself. Gerda does not give up hope for her friend and sets out in the world to find what has happened to him. Along the way, she meets people and animals, all who come to love her and help her on her journey. At the Queen's throne, Kay is trying to puzzle out ice blocks to spell the word that will grant his freedom. Though the glass in his eye makes him think the figures he completes are of great importance, his ice game of reason is futile, and Kay is freezing to the point of perishing. He cannot solve the puzzle. Aided by angels, Gerda enters the palace. As she holds Kay, Gerda's hot tears melt the splinter of glass from his heart. She begins to sing, and Kay bursts into tears, flushing the shard from his eye. At last, the mention of the infant lord, Kay sees surely. The two return home, grown but innocent children at heart. Now is a great time to go ahead and like this video. Subscribe now and never miss a story. Okay, so let's get into it then. As I mentioned, I love reading the beginning about the devil's mirror. The goblin glass is a powerful metaphor. Having a fallen perspective makes the world a disappointing place, so we attempt to control and correct. The mirror brings to mind Paul's quotation in To the Corinthians, For now we see in a glass darkly, but then face to face. The Snow Queen is a call to innocence and gaining an eternal perspective. Another dominant theme in the Snow Queen is a worldly sense and inner sense. We see this best compared when we look at the two female characters. The Snow Queen was beautiful but all made of ice, cold, blinding, glittering ice, and yet she was alive for her eyes stared at Kay like two stars, but neither rest nor peace was to be found in her gaze. Her palace is empty, vast, and cold. The Snow Queen is the embodiment of frigid sensibility, and her lake of understanding is made up of disjointed and fragmented pieces, no coherence or correspondence between them. How is Kay supposed to riddle out this freedom when nothing seems to fit together right? In contrast, Gerda is warm, loving, and a representation of inner sense. Gerda cries out of sympathy, not hurt when Kay teases her. When everyone presumes him dead, she listens to signs that speak to her that he is alive. Throughout her journey, her innocence protects and propels her to save her friend. Of Gerda, the magic woman says, I can give her no greater power than she already possesses. Don't you see how great that is? Don't you see how both men and animals are obliged to serve her? She cannot receive any power from us. She possesses it in her heart. For Hans Christian Andersen, Gerda would have most certainly been a representation of Christ. Let's explore how he chose female characters to demonstrate his dominant, often masculine, motifs. The Snow Queen herself is curiously female. Women are often given qualities like warmth, fullness, and controlled by our emotions. This woman is nothing but cold logic and emptiness. Gerda is her opposite. Rather than boy saves girl, we see the reverse. Gerda bravely steps out into an unknown world, and her feminine sweetness save her time after time. 
Her power is so inspiring. Gerda animals and, and humans both alike venture are from their childhood Eden at her prayer out into the world. Angels form but their to path to maturity looks her vastly into different. Snow Queen's palace. Kay's maturity is shallow, stuck in a self-centered spiral. Gerda maintains a sense of innocence that allows her to look beyond herself and help others. When we try to figure out the meaning of life, we most likely will miss the mark if we rely on our own logic and understanding. Eternity solves itself when we become as little children. In the New Testament we read, Except you become as little children, you can no wise inherit the kingdom of God. The roses fade and die, but we, our infant Lord, shall surely see. Song from the Snow Queen. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis of the classic fairy tale. Be sure to subscribe, like, and join in the conversation below. And you can follow us at forgotten underscore feminine on Instagram.